What's up, everybody? Welcome back. John Levesque here. I'm back with another tutorial. I'm very excited. I'm going to continue my DocuSign 101 series. Today, we're going to talk about admin settings. So you've gone ahead and you've got your account. We have talked about all the various different DocuSign products that there are, way more than just eSign. Uh, we went ahead and started with all of our signing settings with Mariano. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue on with admin settings. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my screen here. Perfect. And what you can see is I'm at the DocuSign admin settings page. But before we jump in there, there's one thing that I forgot to cover in, in the previous video where you set up your account uh, and or the signing settings. And I just want to go over it really quick. And so I haven't done it yet myself so that we can do it together. But what I want you to do is from your main DocuSign e-signature page here, I want you to click on your name or initials up here in the left corner and then go to manage profile. Okay, now that's going to take us to the personal page here. And then what I want you to do is click on this little camera icon right here and then browse to a photo of yourself and then go ahead and upload it so that now you have a photo set. As the admin, as a person who might be trying to get DocuSign started or get other people to use it, a photo is going to add a level of trust that you just really want to have. And also, you know, it's just nice to have other people add their photos. And so I always say lead by example. And so the very first thing I wanted to cover here was just getting a photo added. So now that we have that out of the way, we can actually go ahead and close that tab. And if we were to refresh this here, we should see my photo should pop up here in this right hand corner. There it is. Simple as that, okay? So now let's go ahead and jump over to our admin settings. And uh, let's go ahead and look at first brands, okay? So the first thing you wanna do when starting with DocuSign is you kinda wanna customize the look and feel of what you'll be sending people. So it's not just straight out of the box, right? So it feels like it's coming from you. So let's go ahead and click on brands. We don't have any, let's add one. I'm gonna say John Levesque, JL, and I'll hit save. And so now the company name, we'll say John Levesque Media, and then we'll set that as our sign default, right? So that it always just comes from us. And then we'll actually fix this to John Levesque. And now we can uh, create our theme here, which is the fun part, okay? And so we'll click on that button and then you can see upload signing logo and then upload email logo. And so the signing logo is what you see inside of the document. And the email logo is the one you get like at the top of the email that you'll see in your inbox. And so let's go ahead and click on upload signing. And then I'm going to click that. So you can see here how it drops it inside of the document at the top now. And if I click on upload email, we'll use the same one. Uh, it doesn't show you, but that's also going to go in the top of the email, okay? And so you can see there's some image requirements here. So you wanna make it a JPEG. I always use a PNG. You wanna try and make the size pretty small so that it's uploadable. You can see max file size is 300 KB. So it's not very big, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Now, uh, some very fun parts here is we can actually customize uh, our colors. And so we can have a little bit of fun with this. If we go to my website, uh, we'll just have that open here. We can do uh, header background, right? And then check this out. We can actually uh, use our logo. If we had colors in it, we could use the color picker uh, to pull some of those colors, okay? Instead, what we'll do here is we'll kind of take a look at the website and you can see I've got a few different themes. I have an orange, I have a blue. So that orange, let's go ahead and try and match that first. You know, I really like orange. It's a great color. Uh, let's see, it's a little brighter. Eh, I mean, it's probably a little lighter than that. I, I'm, I'm sure I got it wrong, but we'll go ahead and, and say that it's close. Now, we, we see this color is low contrast and may cause legibility issues. Oh, okay. So it doesn't like that for me. Uh, you can see that it was a darker color here. So why don't we try and go back down to orange and we'll use like a darker orange. Okay, that doesn't seem to complain. Good. Um, let's go ahead and we'll use header text, we'll keep it white so that header text stays white inside of our darker color. I like that. Now the button uh, we can change as well. And so we can 
you can see here as I'm changing it, it's changing. So let's go ahead and stick with our theme and we'll make it just a different shade of orange. Um, and then our button text, uh, let's see, how's it look white? Yeah, it looks okay white. I think we'll keep it black just to separate it. Okay, and so now if we go ahead and click on save, it's gonna go ahead and save our entire theme. Check that out, signing, email, colors. It's all right there. And if you ever want to edit it, if you're like, oh, you know what? If the designer comes and yells at you and says, oh my gosh, your orange is terrible. You need to change that right away. You know, maybe we say, okay, well, instead of orange, maybe let's make it gold. And that looks even worse, you know? So you get the point. You can mess with this. You can customize it to your heart's content. And, and, Honestly, uh, what I like about this is, you know, you have this warning here that says it's high contrast and it might not work well. Honestly, if I really want to, I can save it anyways, right? If I really want to say, no, that's what I want. It's going to be fine. I can go ahead and click save. So we've gone ahead and talked about logos and colors. And so for branding, I think that's really the main things I wanted to cover. Now, you can do some advanced things here, header and footer links, languages, destination URLs. I'm not going to get into that. This is just a brief overview. If you want to, though, go ahead and click into those. Check them out. They're going to give you a lot more options for customizability. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back up to the top, and let's uh, let's make sure we always save. So I almost made a cardinal mistake. I almost didn't save before leaving the page. Click save. Now let's go to our regional settings, and then let's see. Uh, we can allow users to set their own time zone, right, because we don't want to force time zones on people because our companies are multi uh, uh, faceted and, and, and multi locational and people are all over the world now. So we wouldn't want to force specific time on everyone. Right. And so um, here I've set my default date and time format and my time zone. You obviously could go ahead and change that for whatever you wanted. Default language is English. And then also I'm going to just go ahead and leave these date sign fields alone. If you made any changes there, you go ahead and click save. Um, now, very simple, right? You you want to set this for for the let's say you know the base. If the if the headquarters is in San Fran, you'd set to Pacific time, and then you'd let your individual users change their time zone to wherever they live. Let's move on to users and groups. Um, the first thing we'll do here is we will add a new user. Okay, so here's me. You can see all my stuff. We'll add a new user, and so we'll just put, uh, uh, let's see, business at next, full name, business user, language English. You can see there's a few required fields here. Next, for additional, add an access code. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say, nope, we're not going to do that. And then for permission profile, we can choose here. Are they an admin? Are they a sender? Are they a viewer? And so I'll go ahead and say, you know what, let's give them sender permissions, which just stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit about permissions in a second, um, but we'll just go ahead and assign a standard permission set to them for now. So we'll click on add user. So now we can see we have me and we have the very generic business user. Okay, so now that we have a user, and so this user is pending, I want to call this out, um, this, this guy's pending, as soon as he goes and, and clicks in his email and accepts the invite, this will then change to active just like me, it's just giving me a status as the admin to see, ah, this user who you've tried to invite is just pending, and so hang out, see when they accept it. Okay, so next piece I want to talk about is permission profiles. So you can see here those three roles that I was able to sign, right? An admin, a sender, and a viewer. And so we can see we can like view these, right? So if we want to view what admin is, it's full administrative access, right? And then on user permissions, it's almost everything. Now, if we were to come to viewer and view it, right? It has no administrative access. And on the user permission side, it has nothing. Okay. So we can see how we can segment our users very easily here, right? Admin, send, and view, right? And um, if we wanted to maybe create one of these that had a new permission set, maybe we need something in the middle. Maybe viewer isn't enough, but maybe sender is too much. 
what we can do is we can add a permissions profile and we can do viewer plus, right? We'll give them no administrative access, but on the user side, we'll allow them to, let's see here, what do we wanna let them do? We'll allow view and manage rights through the API, okay? And so that's all we're gonna let them do is, is access envelope rights through the API. We don't want them to be sending other things. We don't want them to be messing with any of our admin settings. We only want them to view and manage envelope rights through the API. So now we could add that profile in and you'll see here we have this brand new profile, Viewer Plus, okay? And so now that's the second piece now, very quick, right? Obviously you can get very precise with this. You can slice and dice roles in, in hundreds of different ways with admin settings, without admin settings, with a limited set of admin settings. There's, there's You can, can slice and dice that to your heart's content, but this just gives you a basic overview of what's possible there. Um, next one I wanna talk about is groups. So uh, groups is how we kind of organize users and, and we can control like access to things, right? So, so we have the administrators group and then the everyone else group. Maybe we wanna do uh, template team, I don't know, whatever we wanna call them, okay? And then what we can do here is we can assign different users to that group, okay? And so now inside of our template team users, we can see we have us. And then now we can even assign brands to that team. So, so you now you can see how we could organize different people in different ways where different departments might have different branding and they might need to deal with different people. We can now start to build those cohorts out, right? We add our users, we add our permission sets, we add our groups. Now we have organization of users, okay? Cool. All right. So the next thing is I want to jump into signing and sending. Let's take a look at signing settings real quick. There's two things that I want to call out that you're going to absolutely positively want to turn on. Okay. So the first one is this. Allow recipients to view mobile friendly documents with responsive signing. So you definitely want to allow mobile. A lot of people are gonna use their phone to do DocuSign and you want that. You want them to be able to have that ease of use. That's a big part of what we're doing here is trying to make it so you can make important decisions and deal with, with critical documents while doing the important things in life, right? So that's a huge one. Make sure that's on. The other part though, is I wanna always make sure that this is on. Allow account users to decide if they should send a link or attach a PDF. I think this is just a good practice to allow users to decide. I think there's there's people who have strong opinions on this. And so I always make sure that that option is on as well, okay? So now let's go ahead and save, all right? And now let's come down to uh, reminders and expirations, okay? So reminders is gonna be, if I send a contract and you don't respond to it, um, how long does the system wait to remind you, right? Because you shouldn't have to remind someone to sign this thing. We want the system to do it for us, to become a bit of a nag, not too much, but enough. And so this is where you get to decide that, right? And so one thing you can do is, obviously what we're doing here is in admin settings is creating settings for anyone who's going to use this DocuSign account. All those users we invited will be subject to these settings. And so what you can do here is you can actually allow senders to override these defaults you're sending, which I think is a great thing to do because maybe someone wants to remind their client every day. Maybe they want to remind them every six hours. Maybe it's really pressing. And if it doesn't get signed, they want to send a reminder after 30 minutes. Who knows what the case may be? You want to allow senders to override. But to do this, you're going to click this box, send automatic reminders. Okay. And then days before sending first reminder. So maybe we'll give them three days before we remind them. But then after three days, if they don't sign, let's remind them every day to sign this thing. Now, I'm a bit tenacious. This might be seen as uh, high pressure, depending on the situation. This is not a recommendation. This is just simply showing you what's possible. Maybe you want to do this after seven days, 
you remind them every three days. Maybe that feels better to you. We can go ahead and go with that. Um, and so then also what you want to do here is set an expiration. So, you know, we're sending out a contract or, or something that needs a signature. So it's probably binding in some way. Most of the time, a contract will have an expiration. And so one of the things we can do here is set a default expiration. And, and I think it's a good practice to put 30 days. Unless your contracts are very long running, then go ahead and set yourself out to whatever you need. Or if you deal with very fast turnaround contracts where you get you send out an offer and you expect uh, an answer immediately, you know, you could put this down to three days. Now, obviously, that's not going to work for our reminders here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just set it for 30. And then the last setting here is days to warn signers before expiration. So after seven days, we remind them every three days up until 30 days at 30. This thing times out. Do we want to warn them before it times out? And I would say, yes, we probably do. And we probably want to warn them another time, three days before this times out to say, hey, you got three days left to sign this contract. After that, gone, right? So this is reminders and expirations. It's a small little area, but it is extremely powerful. And I definitely recommend setting your settings to, you know, whatever works for your company. Um, but, but this is how it's done. So let's go ahead and save that. Remember, always, always save. Okay. All right. So the next thing we'll talk about is comments. Another small area, but just something I would like to point out here. Um, this is so that when you send a document, let's say that you want to allow some kind of conversation about it. And maybe you don't want to do that in email. You want the conversation to be with the document so that can become part of the legal discussion. You would allow comments here so that somebody could comment back. Now, maybe someone who you invite into the organization who's also using DocuSign doesn't want to allow comments. We can go ahead and allow senders to override that. Now, what to know is this is all on by default, so you don't have to mess with any of this. I just wanted to point out what's possible here for you in case you don't want to have comments allowed. All right, my friends, that was it. A lightning round introduction to DocuSign admin settings. If you have any questions about any of the settings I covered, or if you have any questions about the settings that I did not cover, go ahead and just drop them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Please go ahead and also like and get subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any more tutorials. That's it for me from today. Much love. I'll see you in the next one.